Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. And it feels so good to be back because I have the start of a special new series for you guys. Something that's been uh, requested. And I've been really thinking about how to do it. The concept is to discuss discontinued fragrances in my collection, which if you know me, um, I am mostly fragrance lover, but I'm also maybe part collector. And when something gets discontinued, I start to get that itch. I gotta go get it. You know, I gotta get it before it's gone, before the price goes up, before the last bottle's gone and I'll never be able to get it again. So if you know my collection, if you've watched some of my older videos, you know that discontinued fragrances or even maybe older versions of fragrances is kind of my thing. Uh, it's something that I really look for. I look on the bottom of the bottle and make sure it's the right you know, variation and all that good stuff. And I'm into all that. And so this, I don't know what I'm going to call this series yet. One of my subscribers came out with something that I really like. She, it's from Heinke, who um, she basically said that uh, Ramsey, Ramsey's Ramblings is a great name. So this could be Ramsey rambling about discontinued fragrances. I don't know. But um it's a great name, Heinke, so I, I mean, I feel like it should get used somewhere and where better than on discontinued fragrances. Now, um, to make these somewhat uh, appetizing and uh, palatable to the average viewer and consumer, um, I'm going to do these somewhat alphabetical. So we're going to split this up because there's some fragrances here that truly are long lost discontinued fragrances. The thumbnail fragrance, the one I'm going to start with, is a great example of that. Um, and then there's some that I just want to talk about the formulation. You know, there's a certain bottle or a certain formulation that you should go for. Um, so this is going to make up a little bit of both. We're going to do A, B, and C today. And then as the days, weeks go on, I'm still going to mix in my other perfumers portfolio videos and uh, I'm still going to mix in this year in perfume. And then I promised a very special video once I hit a thousand subscribers. I'm going to do a top 100 countdown of my favorite fragrances to wear. So not, the, not what I think are the top 100 fragrances of all time, but my personal top 100 list as far as uh, my personal favorites to wear. And I'm agonizing over it at the minute. Um, you know, you would think 100 slots is a lot. It's not. Uh, it fills up quick. There are some major fragrances that get left off or get put too low or this, that, and whatever. But it's it's my list. Uh, but that's something I'm working on now because I know 1,000 is kind of right around the corner. So let's get started because I do have a table full of fragrances. And I'm going to start with a very special fragrance. Uh, not just the fragrance itself, but because I found the box. And this is, so I've shown you guys this fragrance before, but I've never shown the box uh, on my channel. And it is a very interesting box. This is, uh, well, actually, you know what? I want to take that back because I want to do Scent of the Day. Sorry, I didn't mean to psych you out there. Um, that was a little bit of a head fake, and I, and I showed it so you saw it. But I'm still going to do Scent of the Day. Let's do it first. Um, scent of the Day is this. This is Spice and Wood from Creed, and actually a really beautiful bottle. Um, it used to come with this little lambskin, lambskin wrapper, me lord. This lambskin like wrapper that would go around it with this little, you know, golden thread that you would tie. Um, it, it, it's ridiculous. This, this line is called the Les Royales Exclusive line. Apparently, they only made like 500 or 1,000 of these bottles. Now they have new bottles you've probably seen from Creed um, for these. This is the, it looks like this, um, uh, it looks a little bit different than, than the big 250 ml flacon. But um, this scent is a woody spicy scent as they call it and um i like it but i don't love it let's put it that way um the nicest part about this scent is probably there's a decent amount of iris creed says egyptian iris i don't know uh, it's apple, bergamot, lemon in the top with angelica root, birch, clove, patchouli, pimento, pink pepper, and vetiver in the heart. 
and then the base is oak moss, iris, musk, and cedar. You know, the thing about this fragrance is it is a nice fragrance, but when you're talking something that's a thousand dollars a bottle, I just want more than nice. I want I want something that really moves. For a thousand dollars a bottle, the thing should grab me. You know, it should it should completely blow me away. And um this doesn't do that. It's just a nice, easy to wear fragrance. It was 90 degrees here um, on April 9th in Texas, which is pretty hot. So this is when I like to whip stuff like this out. We went to a crawfish boil today. I hope I don't have any of my teeth still. Uh, um, we went to a crawfish boil and uh, so I am like ready for a nap, but I had to do this video. Um, and so I wanted to wear something easy but nice. And so this is when I would reach for something like this. Um, so spice and wood. The coolest thing about this fragrance is probably the bottle, to be honest with you. Um, the bottle is pretty awesome with the Creed logo all over it. Um, but the fragrance itself, I, I wouldn't recommend spending this kind of money on it. Okay, now let's do the first scent, which I gave you the head fake on. And this is a discontinued amouage from the late 90s called Silver Crystal Man. Now, Silver Crystal Man is one of the most beautiful frankincense fragrances you will ever smell. This is very true to the heart of what Amouage is all about. This is florals, rose, and ylang ylang, and jasmine with this clove, with this spicy clove. And then there's beautiful woods and frankincense in the base. So you get guyac wood, sandalwood, cedar, and then one of the most lovely iterations, one of the best silver frankincense you will ever smell. This is what the old Amouage bottle used to look like. You can see the cap has that Kanjar dagger thing going on that uh, is still carried over to the new caps. But look at the design of the bottles. Look at how intricate that is. Um, it's absolutely stunning. Uh, and that is what they, that's what Amouage started out with when they were bottling things just in a hut, probably, you know, by the river kind of thing. And this is the box. Um, I've never shown this box before. That's the old Amouage logo. That is the, I'm not big on boxes, but something super rare like this. I figured you guys would get a kick out of it. There's the bottom with the limited ingredients right here. And um, let me show you this. This is what it actually comes in. Maybe I'll start storing it in this. This felt feel 50 ml on the back. Uh, and then inside, actually, this is kind of cool. You guys will get a kick out of this. It has this, um, it has this card. Oh no, did I lose it? There was a, um, there used to be a, oh, here it is. It's, it's stuck inside. Here it is. Thank you for buying. Thank you for buying a world-class Amouage luxury product. I have personally packed this for you. If you have any comments about our product, please do write to us. In closing this certificate, our address is on the reverse. Signature Khalid? Maybe it says Khalid? I don't know. Um, but that's what used to come. They used to personally sign every single Amouage bottle. How about that? Cool stuff, huh? Uh, sales at amouage.com, Muscat Sultanate of Oman. I absolutely love it. And it came with this little, uh, brochure, um, and where, you know, they talk about some of the other amouage scents at the time. I really wish I had a bottle of gold, um, in this version. I do have a bottle of gold, but it's in the newer version with the magnetic cap. But, uh, I'll tell you what. Um, silver is absolutely stunning from a, from a frankincense lover. It, it's this, you know, thick floral, you know how, um, 
people say that Amouage Gold is like a traditional French perfumery. It's not like Middle Eastern Arabic perfumery. It's like proper uh, fine French perfumery done if, by an Arabic house. So is this. Um, this is kind of their follow-up to gold. Um, and it's, it's almost like if gold is just a little bit too hard for you to wear, silver is a little bit easier to wear. It didn't take off. No one talks about it. It didn't do good, but, uh, I love this fragrance and I'm so happy to have it. And I usually wear it in weather like this, spring and summer. Gold, I usually reach for more in the colder weather. Um, let's see if this still fits in here. Oh, yeah. This will be your new home. How about that? This will be your new home, Amouage Crystal. Uh, now that I found your your box, all right, we'll put we'll put your paperwork back in the actual cardboard box, and uh, you'll live in here on my shelf behind me from now on. So that is Amouage Silver Crystal, long discontinued. Uh, they released Silver Man, but I've smelled them both. There are some differences. Um, but I don't have a bottle of just the regular Silver Man, but Silver Crystal Man has been discontinued for a long time. So the next one that's discontinued by Amouage, again, we're going A, Bs, and Cs today, and I don't even know if I got them all, but these are just kind of a good starting point of things that I wanted to talk about. Uh, the next one, this is the new packaging of Amouage, well, the newer after, um, after the old packaging, and, whoops, this is Amouage Ciel Man, and beautiful um, package as always. I mean, this is one of the best packaging in the game, one of the best bottles in the game too. I love, love Amouage's bottles um, with the Swarovski crystal right here. Um, you know, this is the magnetic cap. There was a version of this non-magnetic cap of CL Man, um, but this is the Made in Oman version, and I'll tell you what. <sighs> magnetic cap or non-magnetic cap, I'm not here to talk about versions. I'm just here to talk about the fragrance. Look at the dent that I've put in this fragrance. This is my dent. And the reason that I've put such a dent in this fragrance is this is one of only a handful of amouages that I wear in the heat. Uh, I will wear Silver, I will wear Lyric Man, um, and I will wear Bracken, for example, because that's a Fougere. Uh, but this one has, an, again, another iteration of that just absolutely stunning Silver Frankincense that only Amouage can do this way. Uh, and this has a little bit of a twist because there is lavender in this. Very few Amouages have lavender. The only other one really that comes to mind as a real lavender fragrance is Sunshine Man, and that's a masterpiece. Uh, I would say this may not be on Sunshine's level, but as far as just, if you want an amouage that is easier to wear and will surprise you a little bit because it has this, um, the way that the marketing is on this fragrance is that they say it's like a like a summer or spring showers, you know, on a on a sunny day, all of a sudden it rains for half an hour, an hour, and you get that downpour. You get that feel like you're sitting by a lake and you've been having a picnic. There's peach, there's nutmeg, there's lavender, rose, jasmine, cardamom, cinnamon, but it's the base of patchouli, frankincense, cedar, sandalwood, vetiver, and I detect some musk, even though there's no musk listed, it gives off this, um, it almost gives off a slight musk feel in the base. Uh, but I love this fragrance and, and you know, that kind of a dent when you have a collection like mine, you do not get by, um, by not loving a fragrance. I mean, this is something that I reach for pretty regularly in the spring and summer because when I want an amouage, it's hard to wear something like Jubilation 25 or Epic Man or something like that. So I reach for stuff like this, the lavender, and you still get that frankincense. It still feeds my frankincense addiction, if you will, but um, does it in a way that's a little bit more weather appropriate. And it's so classy. I mean, it is so classy. This is, um, this is an underlooked 
uh, gem from the House of Amouage. Sad they discontinued this. Very sad. Um, okay. Next, uh, I did a comparison video with this fragrance, and I'm just showing the earlier version, but the classic version is actually the one I like more, but don't worry about versions. They're both amazing. You'll have a hard time finding this one. The classic will be the one that will be easier to find. This is Alain Delon, the original Alain Delon from um, 2000, or 2000, 1980. Uh, and I did a comparison video between this, which is the original Alain Delon uh, bottle, where it doesn't say classic right here. And then I have the one that actually does say classic, and I did a comparison video between the two. The um, classic to me is just easier to wear because the um, it felt almost like the lavender was a little bit amped up. The the um, some of the more challenging parts were were toned down in the classic version. This is still a good fragrance, but the greenness in the opening from the basil um, mugwort. And um, there's a lovely lavender geranium combo. Um, so this is like, you know, you got to think. In 1980, this was competing with fragrances like Antaeus, which is coming up later. Koros, you know, stuff like that. And if you didn't want to wear those, those big, dirty fragrances, you could wear something like this. And it would just fit beautifully. Um, so the original, look at that demonstration not for sale just in case you're blind um how about that font but um uh it's um i'm so glad to have this fragrance this is what really kicked it all off from the house of elaine delon and uh there's this as a fantastic celebrity scent and uh there's some other fantastic celebrity scents out there uh luciano pavarotti is one uh, but elaine delon really the line that that he has for example it's not just this fragrance it's also this one speaking of discontinued fragrances akitos and i've told this story before but now that we've really narrowed it down um akitos is the fragrance that was second place just lost the brief to become dior's poison this is one of Gerard Anthony's best work, and actually I did a Perfumer's Portfolio video, and I forgot to show this fragrance in Gerard Anthony's Perfumer's Portfolio video, and I feel terrible. I went back and, and you know, put it in the notes and all that stuff, but still, um, Gerard Anthony's Akitos is absolutely stunning. Um... You know, and, and Elaine Delon picked this up. He got a steal of a fragrance. This was going to be Dior's Poison, one of the most successful women's perfumes of all time. Um, and it, it, it feels a little bit like you could see, when you wear this, you can see that this could be Poison. But this has a little bit more... Um, it has a little bit more of that jasmine... Um, uh, there is a bit of like this ambery, musky, um, castorium thing going on. It's dirty. There is this castorium civet thing going on in the base. Um, but it's, it's a little spicy from the ginger and the cardamom and, but it's the florals that completely will blow you away. It's this spicy, woody floral thing that is just stunning. And, um... It does kind of make me chuckle a little bit that if you think about it, you know, if if in nineteen in the nineteen eighties you handed a man a bottle of poison uh, and said wear this, uh, they would say no way. That's a that's a woman's fragrance. Uh, but Elaine Delon Akitos for men, right? Uh, and they have no problem. They'll spray it on and walk out the door like they're like they're a badass. Um, so the whole gender thing. When you know those facts, it is a little bit interesting, but this is highly sought after now. If this is a tester, and um, I got this from Anuj at Enchante. Oh, don't do that. Um, and But I also have a 50 milliliter splash backup. And uh, I'll tell you what, if you can get your hands on this, there's been a, there's been a handful of subscribers that have went out and either paid the big money or found a good deal. 
and reported back that Akitos is amazing. But there has been uh, a subscriber or two that has reported back that it's just too, they say it smells too much like an old lady, um, which I don't get that, but I know what they mean. It's that floral, that heavy floral. Um, and it's not an old school aldehydic floral either, like, you know, Chanel number no. five or number no. 22. This is completely different. This is 1980s all the way. My favorite decade for perfumery. And I love this stuff. I'm going to wear this in the heat one day and just see what it's like. Okay, next, we're going to go to the house of Balenciaga. Who, Balenciaga um, is a house that used to make both masculine and feminine fragrances. And they discontinued their entire masculine line. So if you have a masculine fragrance from Balenciaga, you have a discontinued fragrance. So the first one is a fragrance called Ho Hang Club. Ho Hang is a fragrance that I that I don't have. It's a it's an old fragrance. It's almost like um, you know how there was Dracar from Guy La Roche and then Dracar Noir, which was a flanker. Ho Hang Club is a flanker basically of Ho Hang, uh, but it's the one that I like and prefer. Ho Hang is like the citrusy um, fragrance, if you will. Which you know I'm not big on those. I'm not big on Eau Sauvage or YSL's uh, Pour Homme or stuff like that. Um, this is Ho Hang Club. Now you'll notice my bottle says La Club de Balenciaga. Same fragrance. Uh, but just to be sure, I actually have a bottle of Ho Hang Club that says Ho Hang Club on the way. Uh, and I will do a comparison video for you guys to be sure. Um, just to make sure that there is no differences between the two. Because that is something that has come up on... Uh, fragrance forms and, and stuff like that, debates and, and stuff like that. So, um, but this fragrance, um, I bought this fragrance off of Thomas from Early Greek's recommendation a year or two ago. I can't remember exactly. Uh, probably more like 18, 20 months now that I think about it, but something like that. Um, and, and he did this video where a subscriber sent him some blinds, some samples blind, and he didn't know what they were. And this is the one that he really fell in love with. And once he found out what it was, and once he found out that he could get a bottle for 30 bucks, 40 bucks, or whatever it was at the time, he went crazy and, and got and got a bottle. Um, my bottle that's coming on the way is a splash, by the way. This is a spray. Um, but basically, Ho Hang Club is a... Um, spicy woody fragrance that uses some pretty common notes. It was created by Ellie Roger. Um, and there is uh, orris root, which is a very expensive material, but the orris is uh, apparent here. Um, but it's not, it's so well blended as part of the overall composition that um, it's, it's, it's a piece of the puzzle, if you will. And then there's musk, patchouli, lemon, and what I get in the late dry down is this lovely dark rose, a la Antaeus. You get this beautiful dark rose in Antaeus that comes to the forefront later on. You get this dark rose in here as well. It almost feels like it's a, it's a chifra, but it doesn't have... What's strange about this fragrance is it doesn't have the DNA of a chifra. According to the notes from Parfumo, that's it. It's orris, musk, patchouli, lemon. That's it. Uh... Very simple note breakdown. Uh, but the patchouli in here is stunning. And what's amazing about this fragrance, and, and this is something Thomas from Early Greek says, and I think he's right, is this fragrance starts out like it's shot out of a cannon. It starts out like it's going a thousand miles an hour, like it's going to be Antaeus or Koros. And then, all of a sudden, 15, 20 minutes in, it just throws it in neutral and takes it down to first gear and you are just cruising. It just completely dies down. Uh, it's not a huge beast. It's something easy to wear when you want to wear something that is a little closer. Maybe if you're at a job, you're not supposed to wear fragrance. Believe it or not, an 80s fragrance like this because it sits very close to the skin. It doesn't go crazy, um, but it does change and, and evolve. And I like that about it. But it's probably something that would be for you to, to detect those evolutions, not for everyone else around you. So, um, 
Le Club de Balenciaga or Hohang Club is um, the first one on my list. The second one on my list, actually earlier uh, than 87, this is 1987, this is 1980, this is Portos. Now, I have a hard time showing this bottle because I was supposed to have a full bottle of Portos from Rich Mitch uh, right here, right now, but uh, thanks to Her Majesty's Bastards, uh, they destroyed it, i.e. they stole it from me, and um, so I don't have it. This is all I have, and I'm very sad uh, because I love Portos. It's one of my favorite Castorium fragrances of all time. This came out one year before the greatest Castorium fragrance of all time in my mind, Antaeus. Um, and this is long discontinued. This has been discontinued since like the mid to late 80s. That's how long it's been discontinued. But it's um, mugwort, ber bergamot, and coriander in the top. Geranium, jasmine, patchouli, vetiver, cedar wood in the, in the heart. And then the base is something I love. Something you'll hear again in more discontinued fragrances like uh, this one, Leonard Porom. Um... The base is castorium, labdanum, leather, moss, musk, myrrh, frankincense. And that mixture of castorium and labdanum to create that leather. I'm sure there's other things that create the leather accord. Uh, but specifically, that leathery castorium that was popular in the 80s, which again, also is popular with Leonard Porom right here. We'll get to that. It's a discontinued one that'll come up later. Uh, I just love, I adore Portos. Um, and it's an eau de cologne. That's what's insane. It's an eau de cologne that feels like a modern day eau de parfum. Uh, it's such a beast. Oh, I just love it. I just I just adore it. It's one of my favorite fragrances, and it's one of the biggest holes in my collection that I thought I filled. Lousy Royal Mail. Um, sorry about that. Still get a little upset. Um, okay, next, one of the greatest fragrances of all time for men. Um, do you know what it is just by the top of the bottle? Huh? Huh? It's this. Balenciaga... Porom. Just look at this bottle. I mean, just look at the beauty. I mean, it's a work of art. The bottle itself is a work of art. Um, there's the notes if you're so inclined. If you're so inclined to read the original note listing from the brand. Cylon cinnamon, which Euro was explaining to me as a type of cinnamon from a certain region of the world. Um... Which is interesting because I can smell it. I can literally smell it radiating from the atomizer from here. It's unbelievable. God, this, I need to wear this. I don't care if it's 90 degrees. I need to wear this. Um, Italian bergamot. Coriander. Uh, this says thymic. T-H-Y-M-C. I'm guessing that means thyme. Does that mean thyme? T-H-Y-M-C? I'm going to say that means th thyme. Um, patchouli, sandalwood, cypress, and cedar. And the patchouli in here is rock star patchouli. It is uh, patchouli from another universe. It is, uh, you know, the, the only other fragrances where, where patchouli makes me think that you know, it's done in such a way that just completely knocked me off my chair is Guerlain's Heritage and Thierry Mugler's Amen uh, and Balenciaga Porom. Those three patchoulis, they just do patchouli in a way that's just insane, you know. Oh. And then the, uh, dr the dry down is uh, oak moss, Yugoslavian oak moss, which is very interesting. Bourbon vanilla, amber and musk. My God, what a fragrance. Um, and by the way, uh, I've got about this much left. I don't know if you can see. So this is a 100 ml bottle. And I don't know if you can see the line, but um, it's about right here. Okay, so I decanted about 10 mil. And the juice is this dark, um, not black, but 
dark, dark brown. Uh, it is, it's, it's thick. Um, I love that stuff. Uh, the last fragrance from, from the house of, uh, Balenciaga that I own and love it is probably, um, I mean, when you're competing against the likes of Portos and Balenciaga, it's hard, but the way that I would describe this, because this is a Gerard Anthony who created this, Akitos, and who happened to create this, Balenciaga Pour Homme. So we're talking about Gerard Anthony again by happenstance. And this is a fragrance called Cristobal Om. Cristobal Om. Pour Om. Uh, now, you can see the bottle is kind of this cool. It's got this, um, you know this, um, almost like there's a film on the back of the bottle. And, um, this fragrance, um, is a fragrance that is the most designer-ish of all of Gerard Anthony's work that I've ever smelled. Um, but it has some very interesting notes, especially in the cooler weather. That's when this should be worn most likely is the cooler weather. Um, but because everything is so well blended and it gives off that, it gives off this very pleasant designer vibe to my nose. I feel like you could wear this pretty much any time, but it's probably meant to be a cold weather scent. It's mugwort, coffee, tea, and white pepper. So interesting combo, coffee and tea with geranium, coriander, nutmeg, and sandalwood. And then the base is uh, amber, benzoin, tobacco, and vanilla. Um, so very, uh, it's a fragrance that I'm glad to have. But, you know, if you let me wear, um, if you let me wear Balenciaga fragrances first, obviously I would pick stuff like this. I mean, this is my preferred, this is what's really true to my heart. I enjoy wearing stuff like this as kind of like a curveball, as like a change of pace. Um, but it's not it's not the first thing that I go, oh, I want to wear. I want to wear Balen I want to wear Balenciaga um Cristobal. No, I want to wear Balenciaga Por Homme or Portos, you know, stuff like that. So, anyways, that's 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 if you already have all the others and you and you've got some and you've got a couple hundred bucks burning a hole in your pocket because that's what it's going for nowadays, uh, if not more. It's a hundred ml bottle, I think. Yeah, I think this is a hundred ml bottle. Um, so if you've got a hundred bucks burning a hole in your pocket, you know, go for it. But just know what you're getting into. It's a designer. But it is an amazing coffee. I'll do it. This is not a top 10 coffee fragrances one day. And this will definitely be on the list. I'll also do it. This is not a top 10 tea fragrances. And this would be on the list. Um, okay, next I'm going to show you a discontinued fragrance that I wore a couple weeks back. Maybe even a month ago now. And I'm, mm, I'm lukewarm on it. It's not my favorite. I'll tell you that. It's a good fragrance. It's better than a lot of the crap they're pumping out nowadays, but it's just not my, it's not my preferred. Um, can you tell by the cap? Huh? It is Borsalino by the house of Borsalino. And Borsalino is a hat manufacturer, hence why the bottle looks like it's wearing a bowler's cap or something. Um, but long story short, is this is back when um in the 1980s every single brand even a hat manufacturer needed a fragrance i don't know who the perfumer is it came out in 84 uh i got this 200 ml splash so i'm pretty much set for life um from le parfume way back when and um it's not that it's a bad fragrance because it's not a bad fragrance. It's a good fragrance. Uh, it doesn't last very long on me. And it's almost like this, it's almost like this take on this uh, citrus chiffre style. So there is labdanum and leather and oak moss and cedarwood and vetiver and amber and stuff you would think that, you know, you, that someone like me would absolutely love. But it stays very citrusy and a little bit, you know, spicy, woody, herbal. And it's that Italian-style top 
So you get this, um, you get this bergamot lavender clary sage combo at the top, and then it dries into this. Um, there's cyclamen, there's fir, there's jasmine, carnation, which stuff you would think I would love, but it but it stays very, um, you know, it stays it stays very. <sighs> Very citrusy, very uh, herbal. You know, I would wear this in the heat. This is definitely, it doesn't have the legs for the cold weather, let's put it that way. Um, which, reading the note list, you would think, hey, and then it's an 80s fragrance. It doesn't really last. If you're okay just reapplying and you really like the top, this reminds me of something that, you know, someone like Sammy the Bull Gravano would wear. Uh, old school Italian you know, Italian family, Italian background. Hey, a real Italian, you know. Uh, they would wear something like Borsalino. Uh, it just gives off that old school vibe, but it's not my favorite DNA. But uh, I am glad to have it, and I'm glad to have this 200 ml bottle because I looked the other day, and people are trying to sell 100 ml bottles for like $400. So do, do not pay that. You are uh, out of your mind if you pay that for Borsalino. It's It's... You know, 200 mLs is probably worth about $100. So 50 bucks for 100 mL would be a fair price, but people are selling it for insane amounts of money right now. Um, another one that I got for a very good deal, I think I got this 100 mL bottle, this tester bottle for about 35 bucks. Um, that is also going for bigger money now, is a fragrance called Basile Uomo. Now again, it's on the discontinued list, and it is discontinued, um, but Basile Womo, the way that, now Rich Mitch and I both have this fragrance, we both got it around the same time as well, and um, this is this um, spicy green uh, fougere DNA, okay, so think fougere DNA, think of a fragrance like, um, think of a fragrance like Paco Rabanne Pour Homme. That's the one that we both kind of honed in on. Or um, Signature by Jacques Bogart. Something like that. That's the DNA. But this is a decade, decade and a half after those fragrances. And it feels like they, uh, just like I said, Borsellino is like a classic Italian fragrance, right? Uh, Basile Uomo feels like they took that DNA that was very popular in the 70s with fragrances like Paco Rabanne Pour Homme, and they made it a little bit more Italian, if you will. There's this beautiful citrus top. This is an actual, actual beautiful fragrance. This is a great fragrance. Um, I could wear this. I could wear Paco Rabanne Pour Homme, or I could wear uh, Jacques Bogart Signature and get the exact same satisfaction from all three, honestly. Uh, they are, in my mind, they are interchangeable. Um, somebody, now, now Paco Rabanne Pour Homme is not going to be at the top of my favorites to wear list. Not because I don't think it's a great fragrance, because I do think it's a great fragrance. But because it's my father's signature scent. Has been my entire life. And I just turned 37. And he is, that's it. That's his fragrance. And it probably will be until the day he dies. And, um... So for me, that DNA is, that's his, you know what I mean? I enjoy wearing it because I love discovering fragrances, but it's not mine. Um, you know, there are others that I would claim are, are mine. I don't have a signature scent because I jump around all the time. Um, so I, I just can't have a signature scent. The thought of having a signature scent uh, gives me chills. Um, but... Basile Womo, if, if your favorite fragrances are something like Paco Rabanne Pour Homme, you have to smell Basile Womo. You will love this DNA. And this is one of the older, I mean, I think they're all older because I don't think this fragrance made it very long. It was released in 87. I think within a decade it was discontinued. Uh, but you can see there is a short note listing here. So it only says... Um, alcohol, aqua, and fr and parfum, and BHT, and that's it. Um, this is the uh, Waruska and, jo and, and Joel um, distributor. And I found they've done pretty good work. They did a great job on this reformulation, and they did a great job on... Um, the Alain Delon. They did the they did the classic version that I that I really like. 
So sometimes they do really good work, sometimes mm, not so much. But um, the the Joel and Waruska and Joel distributors on these two are are good. They are good. They are good reformulations from the original. I don't know who the original was. Um, S i r p e a maybe. But um, this is um, you know if you like that DNA. You have to check this one out. This is a little bit under the radar. I don't have a cap because it's a tester, uh, but uh, beautiful fragrance. Okay, now we're going to talk about some fragrances that are not discontinued, but the formulation is discontinued. Okay, they're all from the house of um, Bois 1920, which is a niche house that gets very little talk in the community. Um, and... The reason I'm bringing these up is because all three of mine are eau de toilettes, okay? The eau de toilettes are now discontinued. Uh, they're all done in eau de parfum. And if you go to my buddy Rich Mitch's channel and you look up Bois 1920, you will see he did a video talking about this where he actually bought a bottle. The box said eau de toilette. But what came was the reformulated Eau de Parfum. They didn't want to print up new boxes yet, obviously, so they used the old ones. Um, and he said there was a difference in smell. The fragrance that really sparked this is both, actually both of ours, one of our favorite um, patchouli fragrances of all time. And it's called Real Patchouli. Now look at the color of the juice of the Eau de Toilette. Okay, so look at the color of the juice. And then if you go look up, if you go look up the Eau de Parfum, you'll notice that the juice is clear. It's, it, it has almost no color to it. Um, it's shocking. And um, this is one of the best, this is literally one of the best patchouli fragrances ever. Uh, it's a patchouli um, with Texas cedar and amber. It's an amber patchouli. There's a Divana in the top. There's a beautiful mandarin orange, stunning orange. There's celery. There's a celery note. Uh, there's thyme. There's eucalyptus. Oh, there's eucalyptus in here. Very rare note to see in perfumery. Creed's Royal Mayfair has it. Um, Body Koros has eucalyptus, but it's a very rare note. Uh, it's very distinct. And, but it's the patchouli and, and Indian sandalwood and frankincense. There's even supposedly real ambergris in here. This is a niche house. This is supposedly a high-end niche house. Now, that this is not high-end pricing like some niche houses, um, but it is supposedly a high-end niche house. And, and their fragrances are beautiful. The, fr the three fragrances I'm going to show you from them in Eau de Toilette, I absolutely love. But... Because of that mix-up, because the eau de toilettes are discontinued, I will not go buy any more of their fragrances. I just won't do it. Um, they, they are on the same list, in my mind, that Creed is on. I will not buy a new Creed, period. Uh, no matter what, no matter how good of a deal is. Even if I get it for 25% of face value, I won't do it. Um, I only buy old Creeds. I only buy old Bois 1920. Uh, and the base is uh, tobacco, vanilla, labdanum, benzoin, ambergris, and musk. But for a patchouli, I mean, my God, this is amazing stuff. Um, if you're a patchouli lover, you have to get your nose on Bois 1920, uh, Real Patchouli. The other one that they have that I absolutely love, and it's probably actually tied for Real Patchouli. Um, it's one of my favorite vetiver fragrances, and it's called Vetiver Ambrato. Now, Vetiver Ambrato is exactly what the name says. Uh, it is vetiver and amber. Um, and there's, there's other stuff going on. There's lavender. There's that, there's probably that same cedar note I was telling you about in um, uh, Real Patchouli. There's Petit Grand Clove, Artemisia, Lemon, Amber, Benzoin, Galbanum, Labdanum, Musk, Tobacco, and Vanilla in the base. And this, if you don't like the um, DNA, okay, I'm not saying the smell, but if you don't like the, the feel or the vibe of a fragrance like Le Leon, or Chalamar, or something like that, 
you will not get on with Bois 1920. By the way, I should mention, these formulas are supposedly formulas that, the reason that the name of the house is Bois 1920 is that this is a house that was around in 1920 and then got lost. It went bankrupt or defunct or just got lost in history. And they re brought the brand back to life. And these formulas are supposedly formulas that they used originally when the brand was founded in the 1920s. And this smells... When you wear this, you will get a very Shalimar-esque vibe. But what's amazing is the vetiver and amber combination is absolutely stunning in this fragrance. It's so good. I'm so glad I have a bottle of this, and I am so glad that I have a bottle of uh, Real Patchouli in, in Eau de Toilette, because they're going to get harder and harder and harder to find, especially if word gets out. Now, to the brand's credit, they wrote Rich Mitch an email, and they said, no, everything is the same, we're just updating it to stay current with guidelines or whatever it may be. The smell is exactly the same. That's what they said. But he begged to disagree. Um, he begged to differ. Now, the one that I'm not as hot on, I like it, but I don't like it. And I'm glad I only have a 50 ml of this. These first two you saw were, um, 100 ml bottles. This one's only a 50 ml. And it's a fragrance called Sushi Imperial. Probably the scariest fragrance for a, a name for a fragrance you could ever imagine. Sushi Imperial. Well, what they're talking about is this ginger-like note. Um, there is this ginger feel, although there's no ginger listed. It does give off a ginger feel. There's bergamot, mandarin orange, which they like to use, obviously, lemon. And then the heart is jasmine, nutmeg, pepper, rose, anise, and cinnamon. Uh, the base is patchouli, sandalwood, tonka, vetiver, and bourbon vanilla. Now, I'm not saying this is a bad fragrance. In fact, if you like fragrances like YSL's Opium Pour Homme, the one that Jacques Cavalier did with the um, anise note, the star anise, check this out. This is um, um, this is different, obviously, but again, if you just want something that's in the same ballpark as that, check out Sushi Imperial. Great fragrance. And for a niche house, these are very reasonably priced. Very reasonably priced. Um, so, that's that. Um, again, let me let me go through one more that I want to talk about, or maybe a couple more that I want to talk about formula, not necessarily discontinuation. Uh, and I had a, I had a, a chap leave a comment on my, one of my videos and said that the owner of this brand or the founder of the brand said that the formula has never changed since the fragrance came out in 1934. And that may be true, but this nose right here begs to differ in, in smell. These smell different to me. Uh, this is the vintage formula of Caron Pour Un Homme and the new formula of Caron Pour Un Homme. And uh, I will tell you that this is far, far, far superior. Um, this is scratchy. I almost, this, I put this on my fragrances I hate list. I love this fragrance. I think this is a classic. It's one of the first fragrances marketed towards men. Uh, this was 1934. Mouchoir de Monsieur was 1904. So I think this is 30 years later, but still one of the earlier men's marketed fragrance. And it's basically lavender, uh, and a couple different types of lavender. Lavender Absolute and stuff like that with vanilla and musk and amber. It's basically lavender and vanilla, if you really want to um, distill it down. And um, it is old school, but it's so, it's almost like it's so old school that it's cool again, if that makes sense. Like, no one's gonna smell like this. This is what your great-great-grandfather wore. And he smelled amazing. And, um, so I can tell you the new one is a bummer for me. If I was going to give a bottle away, this is probably the one that I would give. But I'm always worried about giving bottles away. Someone left me a comment when I did my video, you know, fragrances that I, um, that I hate. And I included this. And they said, now that you've, you know, 
let some air in the bottle and warn it a time or two. Let it sit. Just put it away and let it sit and come back to it. Well, I have, and it still seems much scratchier compared to this one. This one just seems so perfectly chic, smooth, you know, um, just, just beautifully done. This one feels synthetic, cosmetic, um, reformulated. Even though they say it's not reformulated, the smell is different. Now, I never let air into the bottle on this one, but from first spray, I absolutely love it. So I would implore you, if you can find one of these older bottles, um, look at the look at the color of the juice. Um, I should mention this too, because you'll you'll probably enjoy hearing about this. Most people think that lavender is purple because when they see the flower, it's a purple flower as a picture. When they see the plants growing, they get the purple. Um, they get that purple field vibe. It's not purple. It's green. Lavender and lavender absolute in a fragrance like this in large doses would turn it green, not purple. Um, so anyways, um, one of the, one of the, even though it's not my favorite fragrance of all time or anything, it's one of the best lavender fragrances ever. You can't argue that. In fact, there's a, a niche house that Eugene has been really loving lately. Um, and I can't think of their name all of a sudden. Um, Celine. Celine did a riff on this where they, they used lavender and vanilla. And I think they threw in like this barley or malt note or something to mix it up a bit. But it's basically an homage to this. And they're charging 300 bucks a bottle or whatever Celine's pricing is. I have no idea because I have no interest in that brand. I've never, I've never smelled anything, but the aesthetic doesn't do it for me. Um, but this is, this is the one you want. This is this, this older version, this or older. Um, so I wanted to talk about that. And I also wanted to talk about a fragrance that is also still being produced by the house of Caron. Two, actually. One is Yatagan. This is an older tester bottle. If you can get these older bottles, um, the Castorium, and, you know, that's the, that's the star, in my opinion. The Castorium is really amped up in these older bottles of Yatagan. Um, it's, it's this forced floor. I describe it as, like, this forced floor smell. This, um, you, you walk along in a forest that the leaves haven't been disturbed in in maybe years many months let's say and you come along and kick, kick up the leaves and that new dirt that air that's been trapped under the decomposing leaves just kind of lets itself out and the older bottles are dirtier uh caron is a house that normally does good reformulations so this and then the other one that they do is Third Man. Now, I hear rumors that Third Man may be d being discontinued. Um, it's written like so. Uh, this is the older bottle. This is also a tester, so I don't have a cap. Uh, but this is what the old bottles look like. This is a fantastic fragrance. Uh, it, some people say it reminds them of, of you know, of Bellamy DNA. This came out before Bellamy, uh, a, year, a year before. <laughs> Um, it, it reminds them of that Bellamy DNA, but with the leather way turned down and everything else way turned up. The lavender, there's clove in here, by the way. Uh, if you're a clove lover, you have to get your nose on this and Bracken Man by Amouage. But, um, rumor is this could be getting discontinued. So even though I hear the new formulation of, uh, Third Man is quite nice, um, if, if you can find one of the older bottles or even a new bottle, if you're really, if you're not into reformulations, but you're worried about it being discontinued, that's one to put on the list. Okay, next is a fragrance from um, Pierre Bourdon's first wife, Francois Caron is her name. Uh, this came out in 1981, best year for perfume. Uh, and it's called Charles Jordan Un Homme. And this is basically a um, 
riff on a fougere. The bottle looks like this. This is a splash. This is a 50 ml splash. Um, beautiful, beautiful bottle, by the way, with the, with the, um, you know, almost like if you took two of them and put them together, they would make a circle kind of thing. Um, and this is anise, beautiful anise, top anise fragrance. One of the top anise fragrances in my mind. If you're a big fan of, um, Azaro Porom and stuff like that, that uses anise. If you're a fan of, um, you know, um, Rive Gauche or some of those fragrances where the anise is really prominent, Rive Gauche Porom, uh, check this out if you can find a bottle of this. This is one of those old school fragrances where, for whatever reason, uh, it never really jumped in price. Um, Maybe because it's close to that old school Azaro DNA or um, for whatever reason. Sometimes there's fragrances that just the price hasn't gone nuts yet. So you can still find this for a really good price. Uh, at least last time I looked, six, eight months ago. Anise, bergamot, tarragon, lavender, marjoram, and lemon with cyclamen, carnation, geranium, jasmine, patchouli, and cedar. And then the base is amber, oak moss, leather, musk, sandalwood, and tonka. It actually has a similar note breakdown to Borsellino. But to my mind, this is a far superior fragrance. Far. Um, and I really love this DNA, uh, especially in the warmer weather. I like wearing this in spring and summer. Um, even though it has a leather... Even though it has a leather accord in the base... Um, all the other notes, the lavender, the citruses, you know, they just, they just seem so beautiful in, in summer. Um, oh no, you know what? I just noticed I forgot a bottle. I forgot a bottle I wanted to show you. Travesty. Um, a disaster, but uh, I'm going to tell you about it anyways. It is a, um, um, it's a fragrance called Calvin, uh, by Calvin Klein, and it's Calvin Klein's first fragrance for men. I'll show it off next, next time I do one of these videos, if I remember, but it's 1981. It's created by IFF. It's my favorite Calvin Klein fragrance, fragrance, and it's one of the best executions of, um, chamomile and oak moss you will ever find. It's chamomile, bergamot, oh, and narrowly, the narrowly, um, gives this crazy freshness, but it's such a beast. Uh, I also usually wear that in spring and summer. There's tarragon, geranium, orange blossom, uh, vervain, cinnamon leaf, musk, patchouli, sandalwood, vetiver, and oak moss. My God, just look up Calvin by Calvin Klein from 1981 uh, for men. And I think it's listed as a cologne in Parfumo. Um, I have a, a splash bottle of that when it was Calvin Klein Cosmetics Distributors. Oh, it's amazing. Best fragrance they've ever come out with, in my opinion. Um, that's way more my style than Obsession or Eternity. Although I like Obsession, uh, Calvin by Calvin Klein for an old school lover is right up my alley. Um, Okay, now I want to talk about formulations of some Chanel fragrances. The first is my favorite, uh, which is Antaeus. And I have an even older bottle than this, but I just wanted to show you this one as an example because I wanted to show you the Silver Atomizer. Someone was asking me, you know, which version of Antaeus should I go for? And... The easy answer is anything with a silver atomizer. So this is the atomizer. This is class 101 for you guys, which is okay. Maybe this will help somebody. Um, if this atomizer is black, not silver, you're getting a newer bottle. Uh, you want to try to hunt one down that has this silver atomizer. And if you really want to go be a boss, you want to hunt one down where the eau de toilette is written above Chanel. So Eau de Toilette will be here, and this top right here, um, this will be silver, like this. See how the top is gold for Chanel's Antaeus? It'll be exactly like that, but silver all around. 
uh, instead of black. And uh, that's the preferred, that's the ultimate version that you can buy, basically. But anything with a silver atomizer has that amped up castorium. Look at the um, actual nozzle from all the sprays. Look at the nozzle. Look at that caked on brown castorium. So beautiful. Um, okay, next. What do we want to talk about next? Well, let's talk about the other Chanel since it's here. Um, this is the... Now, you don't have to find a bottle as old as mine. If you can find one, even more power to you. But um, this is Chanel's Queer de Russie in the Eau de Toilette. Okay, now, you can find a, if you can find a bottle like this, buy it. No matter how much money it is, just buy it. Even if it's five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars. If you have the money and you're a collector like me, buy it. If it's legit. If it's a seller you trust and it's legit. These old Queer de Russie bottles from the 80s, I think this is 84, um, are just, they, this is, this is one of the, the uh, best bottles in my collection. One of the most important fragrances in my collection. Um... They put this in the Less Exclusives in 2007, and then they started it out as an Eau de Toilette, and then they changed it now to an Eau de Parfum, um, which I sent a sample to Rich Mitch. He did a comparison video on his channel, and he said that the floral elements here, which there are florals, um, there's jasmine, there's rose, there's ylang ylang, it's toned down in, in this version. The birch tar, the birch wood, um, the leather is really amped up in this version. So, you know, the, the fragrance itself is one of the greatest leathers of all time. Um, if it wasn't for fragrances like uh, Bellamy and Leonard Porhomme just stealing my heart, I would say this probably is my favorite leather of all time. Uh, but... It's just, it's, it's, if you can find, just speaking of discontinued versions, if you can find the Eau de Toilette in any version, I would implore you to buy it. Um, look at, look at that. I mean, it's just, it's, it's like an artifact. It's, it's, it's like an, it's like a piece of art. It's absolutely stunning, stunning stuff uh, by Chanel. Oh, Jacques Polge. Um, okay, next, let's do everyone's favorite house. Um, let's do the House of Creed, shall we? Um, so the House of Creed, and I really wish they would change this, but I'm going to go off of what they say, uh, in Parfumo, kind of as a joke. Back in the year 17, six, 1780, Creed released a fragrance to King Henry V, I don't even know which King Henry it was, called Royal English Leather. Now, Fragrantica and Parfumo have 1780 listed as the release date here, um, which uh, I think we all now know is um, a little bit of an exaggeration. Maybe it's not. Maybe Creed actually did release this to King Henry in 1760, 80. Either way, um, whether you believe their story or you don't believe their story, this is a discontinued eau de toilette. All of the creeds are, eau de toilettes are discontinued. Creed doesn't do eau de toilettes anymore. All of their fragrances are eau de parfum. So anytime you see a fragrance that has a gray cap like this, you know it's a discontinued fragrance. And uh, the gray caps, actually you can take off of one and you can just put it on another, if you so like. Um, but this gray cap did not come from Royal English Leather. It came from Acier Aluminum, which we'll get to next. Uh, but Royal English Leather is worth mentioning because even though it's not my favorite type of leather fragrance, I like my leathers to be heavier, dirtier, rougher. That's why I like my leather accord to be created with castorium, labdanum, stuff like that. Um, I like it to have a little bit more weight. This is a fragrance that 
is probably one of the better create better values of all time because in the old days the eau de toilettes within the last decade or so <laughs> the eau de toilettes were selling for cheaper money okay so they were less expensive than the higher end creeds if you will uh, so you got more bang for your buck. You got a 75 ml for 150 bucks or something retail back then. And then they discontinued them all and, and jacked the prices up on everything to 500 bucks after Aventus. Um, but long story short is this was one of the best value creeds because you got an amazing fragrance. Even though the leather is not my preferred style of leather, it's done in creeds fashion. You know, creeds fragrances are made to where you could wear them in any weather. That's why they're great for where I'm at in Texas, because if I wanted a leather fragrance for summer, this is perfect, because this has this airy creed citrus quality that uh, bergamot and mandarin orange, and then there's amber in the heart. The base is leather, sandalwood, and real ambergris, and it does give off that vibe, that real ambergris vibe in the base. That sparkliness, very hard to recreate that sparkliness. That's why fragrances like Green Valley and Selection Vert. By the way, I should mention this. Um, here, let me just grab this real quick. Uh, if you guys know, I, I'm just going to hop around real quick. There is a long discontinued Creed um, that Creed cl claims came out in, uh, I don't remember what they said, something crazy. Um, but either way, uh, Selection Vert is uh, part of, if you ever watch Robes 08, Mark from Ro Robes 08, one of the the Robes uh, master, he's one of the all-time great reviewers, all-time great YouTube personalities for fragrances. And he said Creed had a three-headed monster at the top of his list every spring and summer. It was Selection Vert, Green Valley, which I am looking for. I, I want Green Valley, but I don't want to pay $1,200 that the guy on eBay wants for his, you know, uh, 75 ml bottle. And um, Green Irish Tweed. Those three make up the three-headed monster. I could never find Selection Vert and Green Valley. Uh, they were impossible to find. In fact, the flacones of Selection Vert, which is how they're usually sold... Uh, are between $1,200 and $4,500. I don't want to do that. I don't need that much juice. I found a decant. I found a 30 ml decant for a very fair price. And from a seller that's been around for a long time. And so I very much trust this is legit. I have sprayed it and worn it and uh, wore it to bed. And uh, it does seem legit, okay? So I will be talking about this. It's basically citruses, neroli, and then this peppery, literally peppermint, uh, with ambergris in the base. Perfect for spring and summer. Uh, so Selection Vert is also a discontinued uh, creed that is, you know, it's worth it because of the ingredients. It's worth it because of the, uh, you just can't recreate that real ambergris feel. And even though it's not very exciting, it does something that no, very few fragrance houses do nowadays using real ambergris. Same with this. It gives off that vibe. If they're not using real ambergris here, I would be shocked because it is, it, it, it gives off that leather note, note, but it also gives off this sort of sparkly sheen that, um, I don't know if it can be recreated with, I just... Even though ambroxan is more detectable to people's noses, it's louder, people smell you more. Um, you know, some people say they even prefer ambroxan to real ambergris because uh, it doesn't have that animalic quality. Real ambergris does something to a fragrance, though, that just cannot be recreated, period. It just, it just can't do it. Um, and you get some of that in these old creeds, you know, that's why they were special. Not because the blend was insane or, you know, the note list was crazy. I mean, there's like six notes in this, uh, and one of them's peppermint, but, uh, Selection Vert is, you're going to hear me talk about this more as I wear it and as the weather warms up and stuff like that. That's really where these creeds shine. I tried to wear this in winter and it didn't really work. Um, I'd rather wear Bellamy 
or Van Cleef and Arpels Porome or Leonard Porome or something like that rather than Royal English leather. But if you want a leather that can be worn in any weather, check out Royal English leather. And if you're a hunter of old creeds like I am, try to get try to get your hands on a decant of Selection Vert. Um, you're going to hear me talk about that more as the days uh, go on. Um, okay, next is going to be a fragrance called Acierra Aluminum. Now look at the dent in that bottle. That's my dent. I love wearing this fragrance in the cooler weather. Um, this is a 2015 bottle. You can see by the batch code right there. That 15P01 means it's a 2015. And this is an insane fragrance. And you know I like insane fragrances. Um, it's actually a simple, it's a simple insane fragrance. It's bergamot, fruits, spices, ambergris, and vanilla. Again, simple uh, breakdown, and it's the gray cap, so it's the EDT. These were some of the best creed, best value, best thing creeds ever made were in these gray caps. Um, and the fruitiness, some people say it's like this um, banana note. Um, think, think 1970s Tom Selleck, big hairy mustache, plaid jacket, the shoulder pads, and you know the the handlebar mustache was popular. That's what this fragrance will take you back to. But the vanilla in this, and actually there's one other creed that has vanilla that I, I think is discontinued, but Parfumo said it was still available for purchase, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I think it might be discontinued, is uh, Venezia. The vanilla in these two, this is feminine targeted, this is masculine targeted, but um, the vanilla ambergris combo in both is just amazing. Uh, it feels like they kind of took that Shalimar, bergamot, you know, dirty vanilla idea and ran with it and tried to do something different with high, high-end materials. And it does feel high-end. The, the, the blend is impeccable. The fragrance is not complex um, necessarily, but some people whose noses I trust... Uh, like, for example, Jonathan 1970, you see him comment all the time, got a bottle of Venezia and reported back that it has completely blown him away. Rich Mitch, who doesn't like Shalimar and doesn't like Le Leon, got a bottle of Venezia and it's in that DNA to me. And he said he absolutely loves it. So, um, you know, these older creeds, that's that I, I, I would include Venezia in that discontinued list. I don't think it's available um any longer so the last one i want to talk about that parfumo says is still available but i know it's not is um this this is called zesty mandarin pamplemousse um which basically equates to uh zesty mandarin grapefruit um this is this white um, almost like honeysuckle. I think it's honeysuckle. Uh, Parfumo says white blossoms, but it smells like honeysuckle to me. Uh, honeysuckle, bergamot, grapefruit, and mandarin orange with ambergris in the base. Very simple composition, but in the heat, it's so stunning. And this would smell amazing on a woman too. Um, so clean, so fresh, but the ambergris just makes it interesting. It does something that you just cannot do without the ambergris. You can't do it. I don't think you could create this fragrance and make it any of any value without that old ambergris. So, um, I will enjoy it. I will wear it. Would I ever buy another bottle once this is gone? Heck no. Uh, but I'm glad to have it. Um, and then the final discontinued creed that I would like to talk to you guys about... <clears throat> Um, is this. This came out in 2013. 
And again, Parfumo says it's still available for purchase. It's not. I know it's not. Uh, this is called Millicene 1849. And this is supposed to be originally a Herod's exclusive. This is a 2015 bottle. You can tell right there, it says 15U01. And this is a fragrance that they created for Herod's. And you can smell a little bit of Royal Oud in here. There's Calabrian Bergamot, Jasmine, Patchouli, Cedar, and Ylang Ylang. The base is Bourbon Vanilla Oud, Sandalwood, and Musk. And it's that Creed style Oud. Very Western. You know, almost like Oud wasn't used. Although, if they say it is, it is. But it's very, it's not stinky Oud. It's not, you know, Ducita's Oud Infini or anything like that. This is um, very easy to wear. Um... And probably one of the more interesting interpretations of Ylang Ylang that I've smelled, uh, the yellow florals here are very prominent, okay? Um, it is unisex. Um, and it's powdery. It's powdery as well. But I enjoy it. This is my second bottle. They only come in these 75 mLs. I ran through an entire bottle. Um between 2013 and about 2017 or so. And then I got this. Uh, and I had a chance to buy a 2013 bottle that I passed on because I thought, uh, what if, you know, Creed, maybe I want the newer bottle just for freshness sakes. Uh, but now I wish I would have got the 2013 bottle. But uh, very glad to have it. Either way, uh, it's not something I would urge you to go run out. I saw a bottle of this on eBay for $1,000. Do not pay that. I will come to your house and uh, punish you if you pay $1,000 for this. Um, okay, next, we're going to do a long-lost discontinued fragrance. And again, we're only doing the A's, B's, C's today because there's a lot of discontinued fragrances in my collection I want to talk about. And we're already at an hour and 17 minutes. Um, but this is a fragrance called Bally Masculine. Now, Bally Masculine um, goes for big money. It's very rare. Bally is a sw Swedish, uh, sw I think it's a Swiss house, actually, that um, makes very expensive leather goods. Leather, um, well, very expensive designer goods, period, let's say. <laughs> Not just leather, but high, high-end stuff. Stuff, you know, stuff like... Um, uh, an Hermes uh, handbag or something that 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 kind of level of high quality, um, and they make shoes and stuff like that. You can look up Bally shoes; you'll you'll spend thousands. Um, but they made this fragrance in 1984, and it got lost to the books of history. It's basically a fougere that opens up, smelling almost like you're gonna smell this leather fragrance. You know, almost like there's a hint of leather. And it has this, uh, there's definitely a niece in here. There's definitely a niece. Uh, but it's done just how I like it, you know. It's it's so classy. Um, you know, if you like fragrances like, um, like if you if you bought this off of my recommendation and you loved it, Charles Jordan Unom, I would tell you to go check this out. Uh, they're brothers. This is the, this is still more accessible this is much more rare, um, but, you know, if you're a fan of fougeres, <clears throat> if you're a fan of heavy oak moss, I mean, look at the stain that the juice left on the bottle. This is a splash, and I sent some to Rich Mitch, actually, and um, I think he has looked for it, but it's so rare, so hard to find, uh, but that's one to put on your unicorn list if you're a fan of things that I like. If you're if you have tastes like I like, you'll you'll like that fragrance. Um, okay, last fragrance, <clears throat> and I'm going off of Parfumo here because I don't know for sure if this is true or not. Parfumo says this is discontinued. This is Clive Christian C for men. Okay, C. Now this fragrance is very close. This came out in 2010. 
Okay, and this is a 12 year old fragrance already. And this, this fragrance is very close to one other fragrance that is very close to my heart that I love called Tuscan Leather by Tom Ford. This has that Tom Ford Tuscan Leather DNA, but supposedly they've added Oud. And um, there are some touches here and there that are different. You know, like for example, there's tea here. I don't think there's any tea in Tuscan leather. Um, there is costus and orris root and styrax and tobacco and frankincense and cedar and cypress and elemi and mate and lemon and thyme and mandarin orange and raspberry, orris, jasmine, cinnamon, saffron, rose, cardamom, clove, cystus. As you can see, very complex fragrance. Um, but it gives off this Tuscan leather vibe. So if you have one, you probably don't need another. However, if you can find a bottle of this for a couple hundred bucks, um, with the reformulations that the house of Tom Ford is having, um, and some of the insane prices I've been seeing on old Tom Fords, I saw a bottle of, uh, an old discontinued Tom Ford fragrance, What's it called? Je, jo, Jopon, J A O P O N, Jopon. I forget, but it, it was one. Of, it was the first um, uh, private blend from Tom Ford to be discontinued to get the axe. They wanted five grand on eBay. They're the only one listed, but five thousand dollars. So if you're tired of these, the older bottles of Tuscan leather that are better that last forever you could go for something like this because this is a true beast. Um, and I've got about 60% of the bottle left of this 50 ml and this will probably last me the rest of my life. I mean, it is, um, it's literally a one, two spray in your set for the day. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's very, very good, but it has a problem in that it's very close to the DNA from the house of Tom for uh, Tuscan leather. So, an hour and 22 minutes. Uh, to those of you who stayed around this whole time, I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy this Discontinued Fragrance series. Ram Ramsey's Ramblings on Discontinued Fragrances. Thank you, Heinke. Uh, I do have the best subscribers, and I am going to do that top 100. I'm agonizing on where things go right now. You have no idea how hard that is. Um, I, I have a little bit, a little bit of a break this weekend, so I'm going to continue to work on it. And then next week I start on, um, start going back to, back to school again, back to, back to studying. So I have some time to really kind of think about this. Once I hit a, th a thousand subscribers, I will do that video. So if you could subscribe, uh, it, it is, it is helpful to the channel, to getting me recognized. I noticed, by the way, I'm not throwing shade on anyone here. But I noticed that Wafts from the Lofts did a um, video on Bernard Schott. They did a perfumer's portfolio video, which kind of cracked me up a little bit, which I think is great. Um, I was telling Rich Mitch, I wonder if there's some bigger brands, bigger channels, you know, lurking in the background, taking notes, wondering what we're going to say. Because we can be kind of loose cannons sometimes. We're free men. We're not bound to play by the rules of, oh, you got the free bottle. So you got to say something good about it. We don't have those uh, chains on us. So I'm curious if brands or, you know, um, other channels kind of are watching what we're doing, watching the trends, because I think we really are the trend centers here. Um, if you're watching an hour and a half of, of a guy like me just talking about perfume, you're a perfume lover. The people who watch some of those other channels, they won't even watch the videos sometimes. They'll just go down and click on the list of fragrances and see what's there and go to the next one. Um, so, you know, those aren't the people that I want subscribed to my channel. I want the correct subscribers. Uh, and I think people are organically finding me, you know, through, through just doing searches on their own. I want to kind of be there at the end of a search for somebody who's looking for this kind of content. Uh, and since I do a video every day, practically, I have dropped a ton of videos in the last four or five months. So, um, thanks for watching. Again, I never want to ask for a like and a subscription because you don't have to, but it does help. I'm noticing that it does help with the visibility. 
the channel and it's going to allow me, I think, to kind of compete and get the word out. And I think we are kind of changing things and you guys are all part of that. My first thousand subscribers are, are very special to me and um, it, it, it means a lot. I love the, the interaction. I love the back and forth. I love chatting with you guys. Um, so do leave a comment below on the, the ABC. Sorry, I, sorry, I forgot the, um, the, uh, Calvin Klein bottle. I'll show you guys on the next one. I hope you like the new video. Thanks for watching. Cheers. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.